أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد ولا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بدين الحق ليظهره للدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار فاتقوا الله يا عباد الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله سبحانه وتعالى Verily, all praises are for Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we glorify Him and we thank Him. And we seek His help and His assistance and His guidance. And we ask His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our hearts and from the wickedness of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is no one to misguide. And he who was led to go astray, there is no one to bring back on the right path. I testify to his oneness that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the absolute Lord. And I further testify that he is alone and he has no partner. And I further testify again that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final and last messenger whom he has sent with guidance and with the religion of truth that it will prevail among all other religions even if the unbelievers dislike that as to what proceeds today on this blessed day of Juma, in this sacred month of Muharram O gathering Muslims let it be known that the best of speech is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the worst of affairs are those that are innovated in the religion. And every innovation is a misguidance. And every misguidance leads you to the fire of Jahannam. So revere Allah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by inducing in the hearts the God consciousness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that Allah is ever watching over you. And He hears. And He sees. And He knows the secrets of the hearts. O gathering of Muslims. Verily, we are in a very sacred month. The sacred month of Muharram. From the meaning of the month itself. Tells you that this month is sacred. It is known as the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to love fasting in the month of Muharram. Muharram, by the meaning of it, it means sacred. It means things that are prohibited. And when things are prohibited and we keep away from the prohibitions, it becomes sacred. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was directed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this month. For Allah 
by his own divine spoken words he said inna iddatu shuhuri indallah itna ashara shahran fi kitabila yawm khalaqa as-samawati wal ard minha arba'atun hurum dhalika ad-din al-qayyim fala tadhrimu fihinna anfusakum from the quran verily there are 12 months in the calendar of allah in the book of allah the day he created the heavens and the earth among them four are sacred and that is the right religion these are the words of allah so do not oppress yourselves do not commit oppression against one another in these sacred months and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith as narrated by abu, abu huraira in, in sahih bukhari he outlined that three of the months come consecutively the al-qa'dah the al-hijjah muharram the 11th the 12th and the 1st and one of them by itself the 7th islamic month or rajab O gathering of Muslims, what is meant by the sacredness of these months is for us to honor the sanctity of these months. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, among the days of the week, He has chosen Friday to be the Eid of the week. And like a day like today, the Muslims gather. It's a sacred day of the week. It is forbidden to fast on this day, the day of Friday, unless it falls in Ramadan, unless it's a day of Nazar, which is the vow, or unless you intend to fast the day before, the day after. But to single out Friday as a day of fasting, it's haram, it's sacred. As Rasulullah said, it's the day of the week. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has singled out from among the months of the calendars of the year Maha Ramadan. Ramadan being a blessed month and the best of all months wherein the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. And he also singled out the four secret months in addition to the month of Ramadan. In this month of Muharram, there was a day that is called Ashura. This is the day that is recommended for fasting for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even before he went to Medina, emigrated to Medina from Mecca, he used to fast Ashura in Mecca. Quraysh used to fast on the day of Ashura. The days of Jahiliyyah, before the advent of Islam, before Muhammad وسلم, came, the Arabs used to fast on Ashura. Ashura, literally, it means the tent. So the tent of the month, they used to fast. When the Prophet وسلم, emigrated to Medina, he found that the Jews were celebrating this day and some were fasting. And he asked, what is this? He said, this is the day that Allah delivered Musa alayhi salam from, I mean, Bani Israel from Pharaoh. He saved them. So Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we have more right to Musa alayhi salam. So he ordered the Muslims to fast on this day. This day expiates the sins of one year. From the hadith of Rasulullah wasallam, when you fast on the day of Ashura, it expiates the sins for a whole year, the past year. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said this referred to the minor sins. The day of Arafah 
another day that is singled out by Allah, expiate the sins of two years. That is the ninth of Zilhijjah. So we have some special occasions, special days, special months in the year. The sacred month of Muharram, when we honor the sanctity of this month, it means we try our best to recite more of the Quran, to do more good deeds, make more salah, give more sadaqah. And by honoring the sanctity of the month, we refrain from committing all forms of evil, all forms of major sins and minor sins. We refrain from using of the tongue, words of abomination, words of atrocity, words of evil, like curse words and slandering and lies and backbiting. We honor the sanctity of the month by refraining from these things. We don't pick a fight. We don't pick a quarrel. We don't choose to start a trouble trying to be on the best of behavior and be peaceful by honoring this month as done by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A gathering of Muslims. There are many, many ways in honoring the blessings of Allah and gaining the favors of Allah throughout the whole year. So you don't have to wait for a major special occasion like the month of Ramadan where we have 30 days or 29 days and said that is when I will start to be on the best of my behavior and we turn a new page in life. But every day is a day, a day of goodness. And we live today, as we live today, we can die tomorrow. So when someone comes to you and asks you, which is the best day to repent to Allah and seek His forgiveness and to be on your best behavior, you tell him today is the day. Yesterday is a memory. Tomorrow may never come. Were you sure of today as you breathe the air that Allah provides for you and the food you eat and the people you meet and the masjid of Allah? These are locations that Allah specified also and chosen among the locations of the world, he chose the Masajid. Where, where Rasulullah said, Afdullu makan Allah al-Masajid wa sharruha al The best of places in the sight of Allah on the face of the earth is the Masajid. And the worst of all places is the bazaar. What do you mean by bazaar in the souk area, the market area, where people plying their trades with lies and deceits and cheating, etc., and etc. It's a place where you have to be very careful because they want to do business and they have to lie to earn their living. The sanctity of Muharram is extremely important. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another narration said that we have to be different from the Jews. So he ordered the Muslims if they can fast a day before Ashura, along with Ashura, or a day after Ashura. It means they fast the ninth and the 10th, or the 10th and the 11th. In another narration, he also said for those people who started the month because they were not sure whether the Hijjah was 29 or 30 days, he recommended for them to fast the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th, three days. So that in case 
Dhul Hijjah is 30, and I think it's 29, then they definitely will get Ashura. And the same goes the other way around. So you fast among the Ashura. So Ashura, it expiates the sins of one year. In addition to that, little things like Dhikru Allah, remembrance of Allah, glorification of Allah, they carry very heavy rewards. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kalimatan, ala lisan, khafifatan, wa fil mizan, thakilatan, wa il rahman, habibatan. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim. There are two words that are most beloved to Allah. They are very easy to pronounce on the tongue. They are very heavy in the scale of reward. And they are most beloved to Allah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah al-Azim. Glory be to Allah. And all praise be to Allah. Glory be to Allah the Magnificent. Easy words to pronounce. And O gathering of Muslims, if you sit down for about 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you can say it about a hundred times or more. And you can earn lots of reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah is great. And the remembrance of Allah is extremely great. It fetches a lot of reward. The little, little things counts. You don't have to wait for the major things. You can accumulate a fortune in the sight of Allah by doing little, little deeds, small deeds. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the meaning of the hadith, to do small deeds regularly is more <coughs> is more rewarding than to do one big major deed once in your life or once a year. You do small deeds repeatedly, it fetches more reward. Because the deed you do today carries ten reward and it multiplies the next day and the other day and the other day like compound interest. So when you wait to do one major deed at the end of the year, but you do little, little deeds, like you donate a dollar a day, every day, for 365 days of the year, it fetches billions in the sight of Allah, then when you wait at the end of the year just to make one donation of 365, your donation starts from that day. Your reward comes from that day. But from the beginning, one dollar a day, by the end of the year, you end up in billions in the eyes of Allah, in the reward of Allah, in the scale of Allah. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take this month very seriously. We as Muslims, we tend to take things very, very lightly where religion is concerned. We don't take it seriously. And we're all guilty of that. We are not perfect. We're human beings. We make mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes. But we have a Lord of compassion and mercy. A Lord of forgiveness. A Lord who readily forgives if we turn towards Him. And if we try our best and make changes in our life, positive changes and do more and more good deeds that will earn us a place a very high place in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need that very badly as life is short the lifespan of the people long ago used to be a hundred plus the people of today is just about fifty plus 
And in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if a person lives to be 60, he praises and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything after that is bonus. Rasulullah mentioned 60. Siti and am. After that is bonus. It means you're living on bonus. You can go anytime. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O gathering of Muslims, and honor the sanctity of this month, and pray more, and give sadaqah more, and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfiru Allah al-Azim ali wa lakum, wa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fih. Ahmaduhu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ashkuru. Wa ashadu ala ilaha ilallah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa ba'd. O gathering of Muslims, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inducing your hearts, love and compassion and mercy. Seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know that the hour is nigh. When we hear about people talking and they quoting hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one that he said more than 1450 years ago, that the hour is nigh, meaning the hour is near. They have a little bit of doubt in them. How come he said this? Nearly 1,500 years ago, and I'm not seeing any signs of the hour. With the day of judgment. It's coming. He says near. 1,500 years in the sight of Allah. For us today, is like a few seconds. Compared to the next world. Where life is forever and ever and ever. The years we live in this world, whether 50 or 60 or 100, is very, very short. It's not a long life compared to the next world. The next life, where Allah has promised that the believers will enter paradise and he described them as Khalidina fiha abadan abada, that they will dwell therein forever and ever. And forever and ever, by the Mufassiri, by all the Mufassir of Al Quran and of the Hadith, they refer to it as like a circle with no end. Forever and ever, no end. There's no time limit, it's indefinite. Definitely. We don't have a time. So if I say, or you say, one will live for a million years, you're doing injustice. If you say a billion years, you're doing injustice. Or a trillion years, you're doing injustice. You don't know what you're talking about, Allah. When Allah is saying forever, it means it's infinity. There's no limit. You live forever and ever and ever. But that's what he promises us. This is what Allah promises us. And in the ways of Allah, you will not find any changes. From the Quran, Allah does not break his promise. And we as Muslims, we believe in Allah. That's why we are here. We believe in Allah, we believe in his words. You cannot believe in a part of the Quran and disbelieve in a part. You have to believe in it completely. As Allah says, 
أَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Will you believe in a part of the Quran and disbelieve in other parts? Nay, you cannot. We have to believe in the Lord wholeheartedly. His word is a spoken, divine, infallible words. The words of truth. Allah has made himself al-haq. Means he's the truth. And he spoke the truth. And when he make a promise, he never breaks his promise. And he promises eternity in the next world. That we will live forever and ever and ever. So in this world, we just have to work a little harder. We cannot expect to go to paradise just by imagination and by hope and by thinking, wondering, and wishing. No, we have to work. And this religion is easy. If anyone says this religion is difficult, <coughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know. In Nadina Yusuf. This religion is easy. All the ulama unanimously agreed that this religion is easy. It's so easy if you only know, like the Bedouin from the desert, a desert Arab. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, complaining about the difficulty of the religion. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah. I cannot do this, I cannot do that, I cannot do that. There's too much of things to be done in this religion. I want you to tell me the least, the least amount of things <coughs> I need to do in order to enter Jannah. Subhanallah. A Bedouin. Oh, gathering of Muslims, do you know what's a Bedouin? A Bedouin is a desert Arab, one who is considered to be arrogant and ignorant. One who is considered to have no kind of knowledge, they graze their hurt, and they eat meat and drink milk, and dates, and they live in the desert, they don't know anything much, no kind of uh, literacy, they can't read, they can't write, and when someone calls you a Bedouin, it's like someone calling you a moron, you don't know anything. A Bedouin came to Rasulullah because he has Iman in his heart, he, has, he believes he's a Muslim. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, tell me, what is the least amount of things I need to do in order to enter Jannah? He wants to go to Jannah, but he wants to do the minimum. And the Prophet wasallam said, Pray five times a day. Fast in the month of Ramadan. Give your zakat. And make the hajj if you can afford to do so. He was not satisfied with this answer. And he asked a very technical question, which many of us with our PhD would not think of asking. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Hal aliya ghayruhunna? Hadith in Bukhari, the most authentic collections of hadith. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, do I have to do anything else? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La illa an tatawa. He said, No, only if you do it voluntarily. No. That was his answer. You have to do anything else? No. Only if you do it voluntarily. And the man swore by Allah. He turned around, going in his direction, and he swore by Allah, Wallahi, la aziru minu shay'a, wa la anqusu minu shay'a. I swear by Allah, I'm not going to add anything to it. Neither will I decrease anything from it. And the Prophet heard. The Prophet heard him as he was going away. And he turned to his companions and said, pointing to the man, Qad aflaha in sadaq. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. 
He said, he will be successful if he's speaking the truth. That man will be successful. In other words, he will go to Jannah. If he's speaking the truth, that he will only do that. How can you say, oh gathering of Muslims, that this religion is difficult? And a Bedouin, a Bedouin got the answer from two different directions. The Prophet gave him and he was not satisfied. He said, do I have to do anything else? He said, no. Only if you do it voluntarily. So what's holding us back from just doing the minimum? As Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ The same word he used. That the believers will be successful. Those who are fearful in your prayers. And a whole list of description for the believers. Or gathering of Muslims. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And send salams upon this great man Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who came to us with this bushra. This glad tiding. For Allah himself. He sends salams upon this man continuously. When he says, Inna Allah. Allah and his angels are sending salutations to the Prophet. And he commands you as believers when he said, Ya Yuladina Amanu, Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. You too, you believers, send salams upon him and salutations upon him. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa la alihi wa sahbihi. وَلَيْمَةِ الْعَرْبَعَ الْخُلَفَةِ الْهُنَفَةِ بِبَكَرُ الْعُمَرُ وَعُثْمَانُ وَعَلِي وَنْبَقِيَةِ يَصْحَابِ دَبِيِّكَ جَمَعِينَ بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين بِرَحْمَتِكَ يَا أَرْحَمُ الرَّحِمِينَ وَجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ صَالِحِينَ خَاشِعِينَ يَا وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لا نكونن من الخاسرين اللهم ارحمنا اللهم تقبل منا وصل وصل وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد عباد الله إن الله يمد بالعلو والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروه ولنعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاه